Hi students, welcome to Year 9 Science and Unit 2, our amazing Earth. This is video number 13 and we're going to be looking at geological technology. Specifically what you need to do is to look at how changes in technology have helped scientists develop the theory of plate tectonics. So how has the uh, the opportunity that we've had to develop our technology or to create new technology impacted on the theory of plate tectonics. Now, I think this is a very broad area so what I want to do is cover a couple of potential areas for case study that we're going to be looking at um, in a little more detail. Um, if you look at each of these it's just an introduction at this point and something that may um, stimulate your interest to want to find out a little bit more that's the key for me. The first one and probably the one that's that's worth focusing on uh, is the whole area of seismometers. As we have learned more about the um, the incidence, the frequency and the magnitude of earthquakes, we've been able to get a better picture of potentially what the cause of those is. There's also a very strong correlation in certain parts of the world with buildings that have to be built with the knowledge that earthquakes are going to be a relatively regular occurrence. And as a result of that, developing technology that allows us to predict with a little bit more certainty to um, to test materials in order to determine whether or not they will withstand um, the rigors associated with earthquake activity um, have all been critically important to our understanding not just of the plate tectonics model but of um, geological phenomena in general. Seismometers have been around for a while and um, in the 1960s there was a worldwide, ar a worldwide array of these installed um, primarily to monitor nuclear testing. So any sort of shaking of the earth that was a result of nuclear tests was picked up by these. Effectively what they're designed to do is to just um, spin paper on a roller, uh, a little more uh, high tech these days, but effectively just spin paper on a roller um, with a weight attached to the earth so that if the earth started to move then that would uh, jiggle the needle around and we'd see what was happening and obviously the larger the magnitude of the shakes the larger the um, lines would appear. So that gave us a very simple visual way of identifying when earthquakes were occurring and also something about their relative magnitude. However, this particular technology had great applications not just for monitoring potential nuclear testing but also for earthquakes, volcanoes and other uh, important geological features that we find in certain regions as we've talked about before, that high correlation uh, along plate boundaries or plate edges. And as we've continued to use this technology to continue to monitor the epicenter to find the location uh, at the Earth's surface above where the focus of an earthquake has um, originated, that we've been able to recognize that this is consistent with our understanding of the um, distribution of plate boundaries around the world. So this supports the idea of seafloor spreading and Hess's model. It supports um, the idea of continental drift and Wagner's ideas, as well as um, those other areas of evidence that we've looked at in terms of global distributions um, of volcanoes and earthquakes. Seismometers have obviously uh, continued to develop uh, and we can build a very simple model in class to just demonstrate exactly how these work. Um, but they have become, we have developed our technology and we're getting better and better at ways of being able to measure not just earthquake activity but also volcanic activity as well. But what about the movement of the continents themselves? What are we using to help us determine whether that's actually occurring? Well one really important um, technology tool that is pretty much ubiquitous these days, you're carrying one around with you wherever you go, I know my mine's not too far away, uh, right here in fact, uh, is a GPS. Um, uh, technology and that allows me to use globally positioned satellites to 
tell me about my current location, about how far and in what direction, maybe a particular desired location I'd like to travel to, and even whether or not it's better for me to walk there or to get in the car. Now, GPS technology has developed so much that we've actually been able to use it to uh, enable us to determine the position and distance between different locations. We can also detect um, differences in the Earth's surface. And that's what this little picture is kind of designed to show you here, that um, as the wave travels, hits the surface of the Earth, you're getting a an idea of distance basically uh, on time, how long it takes to travel, and where a fault occurs. So in this, in this second diagram, we've got a fault. We've got some of the Earth that's actually shifted downwards. That slight drop in the surface means that the, um, the signal has just a little further that it needs to travel, which means it's going to take a little more time to return. And as a consequence of that, it tells us something about differences in the um, topography of the land. Satellites have become a fantastic tool for us for um, not just determining our position uh, on the Earth relative to other objects, but also to give us some information about tectonic plates, uh, which directions they're moving, how fast they're moving, and what their motion is relative to other plates. So GPS is another really important tool uh, or an important technology that we've uh, used to help understand this whole plate tectonics model and what its strengths and limitations are. And one final thing which is a bit of fun um, is robots that have started to be built to examine uh, volcanoes. Of course the problem with vo uh, examining volcanoes is it's not just dangerous, it's extremely hot um, and sometimes the gases that are produced are quite dangerous um, to inhale. So what you do want to do is try and minimize the time that you're spending um, around volcanoes, certainly certain types of volcanoes. This is a problem if we want to study them and want to understand what's going on. So the construction of robots that are going to be able to stay in the same place to monitor the levels of certain substances, to maybe collect samples, is and, and then to be able to send that material either analysis back or to collect those samples in a safe way that we can come and collect them later um, for analysis is really critically important. And of course, there's technology now that's allowing us to examine the surface of Mars, for example, so that we can we can take samples a long way from where we are and um, bring that data back for analysis uh, into our laboratories. This is uh, another interesting area that you might want to look at in terms of geological technology. Um, NASA themselves developing these volcano bots and testing them and, and this, this particular one uh, is a couple of years old now. Um, but certainly this technology continues to develop and as we investigate some different examples we'll have a, a look at a specific example of a technology that's involved um, in the study of tectonics just to see how this technology is actually helping us um, not only to provide support for the theory of plate tectonics, but also just to help us to understand things like volcanic activity uh, and earthquake incidents and um, uh, frequency and severity uh, even better than we do today. So um, your, your task for this one will be to have a look at one of these technologies in a little bit more detail, but we'll do that in the classroom uh, or remotely, depending on, um, depending on what situation we're in. So thanks for watching.